Hot Wheels vs. Matchbox has easily been among the biggest rivalries in the toy industry. There have been distinct differences between them that are significant, but in the end, I think you would agree that these are two similar products. They are made by heating metal into a liquid and pouring it into a miniature car-shaped mold that is meant to resemble a tiny version of actual cars you may see on the road. It's called die casting. A lot of kids like cars and trucks, right? So giving them a small version to play with is an incredible idea for a children's toy that has been extremely popular over the years. I'm gonna guess that most of the people watching this don't have as much of a personal connection to Matchbox, considering they have been trailing behind Hot Wheels for well over 50 years now, essentially ever since Hot Wheels were introduced. Yeah, it's kind of a sad rivalry. Matchbox has never even made it close, but that doesn't mean that they should be disrespected. Matchbox predates Hot Wheels by about 15 years, was actually a huge inspiration behind the creation of Hot Wheels, and they are still still being produced today with a dedicated community of Matchbox collectors. And how about this, despite being the smaller of the two brands, when talking about any kind of miniature car like this, many people will still refer to it as a Matchbox car. But on the Hot Wheels end, my gosh, when I was younger, it was like the coolest toy on the market. Like most kids, I would have fun racing them around on those iconic orange tracks, but somehow, I think I might have been more interested in the commercials. You know, that jingle, Hot Wheels wheels leading the way, along with the cool looking logo that was on fire and the high energy voiceover, all combined in a way that made these cars look magical to me. And that has been the appeal. The fast paced flashiness of the Hot Wheels brand has made them stand out from Matchbox. Today, Hot Wheels has grown into a billion dollar a year toy brand, and considering that you can usually buy them for a little more than a dollar each, that is a lot of tiny cars being sold each year. The company claims that Hot Wheels is the best selling toy in the world based on number of units and says that the average kid in the US owns 50 of them. Those are some crazy statistics that I think help support the fact that this is a large scale, interesting rivalry. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the competition between these two brands. Matchbox came before Hot Wheels, but I wanna make it clear that there were other similar brands that were making die cast toy cars well before Matchbox, though typically not quite as small as Matchbox. Probably the most notable one would be the British brand Dinky that started in the 1930s and over the next 20 years became the market leader. They were the biggest brand when Matchbox made their first cars and seemingly a big inspiration for them. See, the Matchbox brand was also originated in England by a company called Lesney. Lesney was formed in 1947 as an industrial die casting company by Leslie Smith and Rodney Smith. They were not related but chose to combine their first names as the name of their business, though Rodney left the company early on and was essentially replaced by Jack O'Dell as the new partner. Almost right away, they slowly started expanding into the production of toy vehicles. They were already die casting more practical items, so it was a logical new area for them. None of their toys stand out as being too significant until 1953 when everything started coming together for them and happened in two different parts. They were in England, remember, and that happened to be the year of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Elizabeth II. It was the ceremony where she first became the queen, and as part of it, she rode in the Gold State Coach, this fancy gold vehicle that was used in royal events like this going back to the 1700s. Obviously, that was a huge thing happening in England, so Lesney capitalized on it by producing a model of that coach that ultimately sold over a million units. It put the company on the map, and maybe more importantly, it made them a lot of money that they were able to reinvest into their next project. That's the second part. The story goes that Odell's daughter had a rule at her school where the students were allowed to bring toys from home, but only if they were small enough to fit inside of a matchbox. Now, that's pretty small, so it made him think that there would be a huge demand for a toy car that was small enough to fit inside of a matchbox. I guess he figured that the kids would want them because they would be able to bring them to school. So, he reinvested those profits to make a small line of tiny matchbox cars. The first one being a scaled-down version of a road roller that they had originally produced years earlier. Matchbox cars were new and exciting, inexpensive, considered to be pretty accurate models of actual cars that were on the road, so they caught on with children across the country. So they quickly surpassed Dinky and for over a decade held the title of the best-selling toy car maker in the world. We sell more cars than Ford, Chrysler, Chevrolet, and Buick. 
combined. Unfortunately, that success kind of backfired on them. See, without realizing it, Matchbox had revealed a large market for these tiny toy cars that a bigger toy maker could potentially try to capture by releasing their own version of Matchbox cars. I'm talking about Mattel. They were quickly becoming the world's largest toy company. They had introduced the iconic Barbie doll in 1959 and throughout the 1960s followed it up by introducing Ken and Midge and Skipper, you know, all those Barbie characters, in addition to many other high-selling toys that had nothing to do with the Barbie brand. So by 1968, they were pretty much dominating the market of girls' toys, but were looking for a way to do something similar for the boys' toy market. Elliot Handler was one of the main people in charge at Mattel at the time. He had co-founded the company with his wife, Ruth, over 20 years earlier, and his name, Elliot, is where the L in Mattel comes from. Well, he was looking at the success of Matchbox and simply put, wanted to create a more appealing, more functional version of it. Unlike Matchbox, who did their best to accurately mimic the standard cars on the road, Elliot Handler wanted his to be cooler, flashier versions of the cars that you would see on the road. I guess they were somewhat inspired by the custom car scene that was happening in Southern California, where Mattel was located. And they had a good design team for the project that was led by Harry Bradley, a respected auto designer that had come over from General Motors. To make the cars faster, they were made with special wide wide plastic wheels with a thin axle and a suspension system, it can get technical, but Hot Wheels moved objectively smoother and faster than Matchbox cars. They got their color originally from the special paint called Spectra Flame that made the cars look more glittery. I don't know how true this part is, but according to Mattel, when Elliot Handler first saw them rolling on the floor, he exclaimed, those are some Hot Wheels, and that's apparently where the name comes from. It is a fitting name, and I cannot express how much of an instant success they were. Hot Wheels made their official debut at the New York Toy Fair and received orders of 50 million units. The custom Camaro was the first one offered on May 18th, 1968, quickly followed by 15 more of them, referred to as the Sweet 16. And that's about it. They were one of the best-selling toys that holiday season, and Mattel had accomplished exactly what they set out to do by introducing a product that would dominate the boys' toy market. Hot Wheels completely changed the game, to a point where Matchbox simply could not compete at that same level. Within the year, Matchbox responded by introducing their super fast line of cars that attempted to mimic the speed and functionality of Hot Wheels. And by the way, Dinky did the same thing with their line of cars called Speed Wheels. In the 1970s, Matchbox came out with Streakers, a more colorful line of cars that was a response to this new graphic printing technique that Hot Wheels was implementing. And that's how things continued to go. Hot Wheels was the more popular, innovative brand, while Matchbox and all of the others struggled to keep up with them. In 1982, Lesney filed for bankruptcy, and the Matchbox brand was acquired by a company in Hong Kong that also went on to acquire the Dinky brand about five years later. It brought together two of the former biggest toy car brands, so you would think that maybe the combination of the two would somehow challenge Hot Wheels, but that wasn't the case whatsoever. Hot Wheels was way too far ahead at that point, manufacturing their billionth car in 1991. As a side note, I think it's funny that Hot Wheels released these gold Corvettes as their billionth car collection. Well, one of these contained a coupon that could be redeemed for a real 1963 Corvette. But the coupon was never redeemed, potentially because the person who bought it was a collector who never opened the package. On the topic of collectors, I also think it's interesting that the most expensive Hot Wheels car was bought by Bruce Pascal, maybe the most well-known collector, for $72,000. The reason it's so valuable is because it is a pink VW bus from 1969 with surfboards coming out the back window. That specific version of it was never mass produced. There were only two of them ever created, so I don't know, it shows how crazy the market is out there for rare Hot Wheels. In 1992, Matchbox was bought by Tyco. It was their biggest acquisition ever at $106 million. Tyco was mostly known for their radio controlled cars and were looking to expand their international presence, so the acquisition seem like a perfect fit. Even though some people were saying that Tyco overpaid, it shows that Matchbox was still worth over $100 million after almost 25 years of getting bested by Hot Wheels. Tyco was the fourth largest toy maker in the US at the time, and this deal put them ahead of Fisher Price to make them the third largest. However, this is where things get crazy, the following year, Fisher Price was bought by Mattel, the maker of Hot Wheels, and in 1997, 
11, Tyco itself was also bought by Mattel. Yeah, a lot was happening in the toy market in the 1990s. It was a $737 million deal that meant that the largest toy maker in the world was now the owner of both Hot Wheels and their longtime rival, Matchbox. They were surprisingly under the control of the same company, and it has remained that way ever since. Despite some early rumors of what might happen to the two brands, they have kept both of them in production separately and seemingly have done a good job in maintaining their identifying characteristics. For the most part, Matchbox remains the more realistic and accurate version of real cars, while Hot Wheels is still a fast-paced fantasy version. Let me know in the comments, which of the two brands do you prefer? I'll be honest, I don't even think I realized Matchbox existed when I was younger because I was obsessed with Hot Wheels. Even though I imagine that may be the case for a lot of the viewers, I'm curious to hear from anyone that has had more of a history with Matchbox. Maybe you played with them as a kid or collect them as an adult. And on that topic, do you own any of the rare ones from either side? I'd love to hear about that. In the end, these are both fascinating brands with a great rivalry between them that you may not have even known existed at this level. So I'm happy to bring a little bit more attention to it. So any other thoughts you have about Hot Wheels or Matchbox or anything else in this video, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Only from Hot Wheels leading the way! Thank you for watching.